Okay, so I'm going to take my first stab at a do-it-yourself, um, fix-your-own home loose outlet project. Uh, not a huge thing, something everybody can do at home, but maybe somebody out there is intimidated by this. So, sorry I look like shit. I just worked 40 hours in three days and got up after a couple hours of sleep and I'm too lazy to do anything else. Um, I'm going to flip the camera now and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have a big floppy outlet. It's not a safe thing. Especially if you have kids, if it's loose on the wall, they can get their fingers in there and get electrocuted. Okay, so first thing, before you do anything, you have to turn the uh, uh, breaker off. The circuit breaker that goes to the outlet that you are fixing uh, is different in every house. Your house is not going to look like this. But you will have a series of levers like this in an electrical box somewhere in your house that will control the outlet that you're trying to fix. So I know which outlet is connected to which switch because I plugged a lamp into that outlet first. And then I had my husband come down here and flip all the switches until the light went off. So we know that the outlet we are fixing is connected to this circuit breaker. So just flip the switch until it says off and then you are safe to mess around with the outlet. When you're all done with the project you have to come back down to your basement or wherever the electrical box is and turn it back on for it to work. So first thing you want to do is take the face plate off. A, a drill is easier. And I have it reversed. All right, then you look up close. There are two screws on the top and the bottom of the outlet. Right here and right here. Now here, the top part of the box is broken off, so that's not even useful. I'm taking the bottom screw off now. Just copy however it's wired. Make sure you have the breaker off. So on one side we have white on the bottom and ground on the very bottom. Take that apart. Okay, flip it over. On the other side you have black on the bottom. Okay, take that out. All right, outlet is free. Now you gotta try and get this old box out. This one isn't too hard because it's loose. It's not even tacked down anymore because it's broken on top. So yours might be screwed or nailed into the wall somehow. You can use the pliers break it apart until you can get it out of there. Try not to damage your plaster and you get back in there to um, put the new box in. You're going to want to have as much intact wall as you can have. So then you need a blue uh, box, duplex outlet box, and this is for old work. So it's got a little flip tab on the top and see that. So what happens is when you screw the screw forward on the front, the little tab gets pulled closer and closer towards the back of the wall. And this fits as a uh, on the lip of the back of the wall. So I'll show you what I mean. First we've got to put the wires through this the holes in the box. So there's four corners of the box here and I popped out one so we can fit the wires through. The other side's not popped out look like that. 
Okay. We have one open slot in the back. We're going to put the wires through like so. And we're going to try to position the box in the wall so it's not floppy anymore and our kids don't get electrocuted. A regular screwdriver, you can start to turn one of the, you can turn the top screw and you can see the tab move towards the back of the, the plaster. So I just moved it up manually. So that foot is sitting behind the plaster there. Then you want to tighten it up with the screwdriver. You can use the drill for this too. That's what I'd be doing if I wasn't making a video much faster. Use the drill. See if I can do it one-handed. That pulls you towards the wall. So okay. So once you have the box screwed in. So those little tabs are behind the sheetrock and your screw that is pulling them towards you are completely tight. Then you can hook the outlet back up. So you just hook the outlet back up in the same way that it was. The black wire goes on the bottom, on the side without ground. And the white wire goes on the bottom, on the side with ground. And then the ground goes on the green screw at the very bottom on that side. So, to do this, you have to put these little loops around the screw and then tighten the screw down. So people have different methods for this. I've seen electricians who can do it super fast because they have been doing it thousands of times over. I'm not that great at it. You can develop your own methods as long as the copper part of the black wire and the white wire are not touching. You'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to try to videotape myself doing this. Okay, side with the ground. Put the white on the bottom screw. I have to kind of unwrap it a little bit. I use a pliers sometimes, but then other times I just get too frustrated with that. So I just use my hands to mold the wire in the right place. And then you can use a drill or a screwdriver. Screw the screw down tight so the wire's in place. Okay, then ground to the ground wire or ground screw. So that looks like that. Now we're going to do the other side. The black wire is going to go on the bottom on the other side. Okay, black side done. So now we're going to shove it back into the box. There's two screws. The uh, top screw and the bottom screw. So you're going to want to compress the wires back into the box. And again, as long as the copper part, as long as the copper part of the white wire and the copper part of the black wire are not touching, you'll be fine. So again, drill or screwdriver. I'm doing the screwdriver because I will not be able to handle the camera and the drill at the same time. 
but I would prefer to use the drill. It's a lot easier. And especially, I'm about to do five of these around the house here. If you're doing five of them, you're going to have a sore wrist by the end if you're using a screwdriver. So if you have an electric screwdriver or a drill, all that would be better. Either one would be better. So you kind of want to line these up if you are type A and you like everything to be perfectly level, then you want to pay attention to where you screw this down so it looks right when you put the face plate on because they can be ever so slightly crooked and then you'll be sad looking at it. Last, you want to put your outlet cover back on, okay? So yours may or may not have a number on it. Mine just does because I um, am labeling and uh, cat cataloging all of my outlets and circuits so I know what's what. Oh, let's see. It takes a flat head, and I don't have a flat head hand driver just to drill. So, just screwing that back on. You want to go slow. If you go too fast, you can actually break the plastic plate. It's pretty flimsy. Just there for decoration. And it will crack if you go too tight. Oh. Anyway, there we go. So then uh, what I'll do is just get a little bit of plaster and fill this in and then paint it. I'm in the process of painting this whole wall anyway, so I've got the paint right next to me. Not a big deal. But there you go. Fixed on the wall. No kids can uh, get hurt on that one and it won't come out. A lot less scary. Okay, and then also, I am not a licensed professional at all. Never had a certification. Um, never went to school for this. I know how to do this because I have um, rehabbed two houses and I've been taught by my family and I've spent a lot of time on YouTube and learning things from people uh, throughout my life. So I have no qualifications whatsoever other than it's, I, I know that it's easy and it shouldn't be intimidating. Um, so take my advice with a grain of salt and just as a general reference. Um, if you want a professional to do this and you don't feel comfortable, of course, call a professional. But uh, I'm here to tell you it's really easy and you can do it yourself. Okay.